All right, all right, all right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Good evening. Welcome to Miss G's Ladies Lounge. We're back here again on another Monday. I know you probably were, was looking for me on last Monday, and I'm not even going to tell you where I was. But what I will say is today is Monday. And we're back again, and we're so excited to be here with you once again. I hope everyone is having a great, fantabulous Monday, and I hope you are ready for a great, great time with my guest on today. I have a wonderful lady joining me. Um, we go way back, like, you know, the seats in the Cadillac. Uh, so <laughs> I am so excited to be here with her today. And um, we're going to just chat it a little bit, but I want to first um, kind of introduce her to you and let you all know what's going on with her and who she is and give you a little bit of her bio. And then we're going to get on with some conversation. So again, welcome to Miss G's Ladies Lounge. If this is your first time, hi, uh, Miss Frank, it looks like. If this is your first time, just drop, drop a little hello in the chat and let me know it's your first time and we welcome you, we welcome you. Uh, if you would like also, this would be a great time to hit the share button. Let your friends and your family know that we are live, we are on, and we are popping. This is Miss G's Ladies Lounge, and I am your host, Gwen Finley, otherwise known as Miss G. So as I always do, I start with a brief word of prayer. So I just would that you would indulge me for a moment. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for opening our eyes and giving us strength. We thank you for another opportunity to do something good for someone else. We thank you for another opportunity just to give your name praise. And today, I pray that you would bless and each and every person that stops by the lounge. I pray that something that we say would be encouraging and enlightening to their lives. And I pray that you would touch my guest on today especially and that you would continue to bless Bless the work of her hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So I hope that you are uh, all ready for this young lady. Let me tell you about her. Today I have with me Gigi Hopkins. Um, her name is well known around the city of Richmond. She's uh, she's a celeb in many different ways. So we're going to talk to her today uh, about her healthcare career, which she started back in 1985 as a certified nurse aide. She later went on to LPN and RN school, uh, earning her master's in nurse education. And Ms. Hopkins' nursing experiences include hospital staff nurse, acute care hemodialysis nurse, critical care nurse, nurse manager, clinical educator, and director of nursing in long-term care. Woo. You want an experienced nurse, this is what you've got right here. Uh, her teaching career started at J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College, and she later accepted a position as clinical educator at Westminster Canterbury of Richmond. Her passion for teaching led her to open her own training center, Dominion Health Education Center, where she serves as program director and lead clinical educator. Ms. Hopkins' most rewarding thing to do is serve as a mentor and a coach to young women who are scarred and broken from past hurts and pains. She decided, I'm sorry, she enjoys being a servant and pouring into the lives of others. And after years of serving as a mentor, she decided to solidify this passion by becoming a certified life coach. In 2017, Ms. Hopkins was awarded the 2017 Phenomenal Women Award, Woman Award for Advocacy for African American Women Living in Poverty, presented by the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Inc. in the Richmond chapter. 
Oh, if you can, I don't know, get you some bells and streamers and whistles and help me welcome my guest today. Woo! Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here with you. <laughs> oh, it is definitely my pleasure. Definitely my pleasure. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, I was um, thinking about how we met um, many, many years ago. Many and of years course ago. it was, yes. <laughs> and of <laughs> course it was through uh, your other career that you, <laughs> that you had, which was through the radio station. And you yeah. used to be one of our... Um, radio host right here in Richmond, Virginia. Yep. So tell us, years ago. Tell, us a little, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you um, seem to transition from, you know, from one to the other. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me. I consider it an honor to be a guest here on your show. So I'm so grateful for that. So thank you. Um, so yeah, so we met when I was at Faith Radio. Um, uh, 1590 years ago. Um, but what most people don't realize when I was at faith, I was a nurse then. Um, but I wasn't, um, doing nursing. Um, I had some health challenges and nursing wasn't, um, right for me in that moment. And, um, I had taken journalism and um, so that was like a minor for me, but nursing was always my passion. Um, and so I had an opportunity to intern with a radio personality at um, Radio One and an opportunity came up at Faith Radio. And so I became the station manager and the morning personality with Jamila. And then I later became the evening personality there as well. Um, and that's how we met. <laughs> And um, yeah. so I did that for quite a few years and um, I was a traffic anchor for Richmond as well. So, um, you know, when you get into nursing, one thing about it, it's your heart, it's your passion. You always return to it. And so, um, though I love radio, I call that my for fun job. <laughs> nursing yeah. is my passion. Teaching is my passion. So um, I consider it a blessing to be able to return back to it healthy um, and to return healthier and then return back to it to teach as well. So, um, so yeah, that's how we got into it. That's so awesome. Awesome. So you actually started out as a CNA. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. your heart really goes back to your first love, which was yes. the CNA. So tell us that transition, you know, how you moved from the CNA and worked your way on up. Yeah. So for me, I'm really glad that I was able to take those steps. Um, I know some people go straight from high school into nursing as far as being an LPN or an RN. But for me, I'm really glad that um, CNA was offered in our high school. And um, so I took that opportunity because I used to watch... Um, family members take care of an aunt that I had that was pretty sick. She was a kidney transplant um, twice. And um, I just remember her taking a lot of pills and having a lot of dressings that needed to be changed. And um, whereas probably most stu uh, kids would have probably threw up at, at watching, you know, yeah. she had her feet, her toes were amputated. And I was just like in it and just like, yes, I can't wait to see this dressing come off. And whereas I'm pretty sure most kids my age would have been like, that is so disgusting. I mean, you know what that looks like. So um, I knew then I used to help patch that up. I used to help with her medication, you know, just even to me, just handing her a glass of water. Um, it, it was, it was just a rewarding feeling. I didn't know what to call it as a kid, but I knew I liked it. And I knew I wanted to be around her house at the time that she was either getting those toes, that debridement done because it was done in her house or just giving her a glass to take her pills. It was just a feeling. And so I later learned that that feeling was being a servant. Um, and um, I never wanted to do anything else. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think, yeah, being a CNA, I think it really helped 
create that foundation for me to be an LPN and to be an RN. Um, my personal feeling, I think every nurse should go that route um, because you learn that foundation of nursing. You get to, especially if you're going to be in management, you get to explore what it is to be a CNA so you can learn how to appreciate one. You get to learn what it's like to be an LPN because then you can appreciate one and realize that a nurse is a nurse not one higher than the other. We just may have gone to school longer, but a nurse is a nurse. And um, I think having that background and having that foundation is what helped me um, as far as going on further. Um, and so, yeah, I, it's just, I can't see me doing anything else. I I get joy. I, it's just a, a rewarding job. Even in this hour, it is a rewarding job. Awesome. So total years that you have as nursing. Uh, uh, I think I'm at 35 now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm at That's 35. Yeah. yeah. I spent 20 of those as a dialysis nurse. Um, you know, we had quite a few family members on the dialysis machine, um, which, um, you know, for any lay person that's listening, it means that they are connected to the kidney machine is what a lot of people like to reference. But um, I would go with my grandmother and I would watch that blood roll around that that machine. And I was fascinated. And so I spent 20 years as a dialysis nurse um, just to... You know, it was a connection to my grandmother and my aunt that I watched with um, prior to her getting her transplant. So, yeah, it was definitely rewarding. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Um, my, family, my family went through the same thing. My mother yeah. actually, um, you know, she passed uh, in 2008 and she was on dialysis. My grandmother was on dialysis and um, I have other family members. But I tell you, I am top of it. I do not want any parts of dialysis. And the only reason is because, uh, well, the main reason I should say is because I can't even, I, the the the, um, the solution that they use, I cannot yeah. even tolerate the smell when I walk in yeah. there. So I'm like, okay, mom, get in. <laughs> and I'm running out the door. Yeah. Like when they, why don't you have a seat and wait for your mom? No, like, I can't no. do that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Dialysis nurses are really wonderful people. I know several and, and, you know, you guys are really wonderful people and you take very good care and you build a very strong relationship with yeah. um, patients, which is a great thing. So when you, um, when you started moving, you know, around and moving up the ladder, um, what made you say to yourself, okay, I want to pull out of the direct care nursing and do something different? Yeah. So I had an opportunity to teach at J. Sergeant Reynolds and I initially started teaching. They had this program to um, basically the end all be all to the program was um, having different departments like they had clerical, they had culinary and they had nursing for certain students who may not excel very well in regular college classes. And I hate to use the word regular, but for lack right. of a better term. Um, and so I was over the nursing part of that. And so at the time the students were going to come out after spending like two years in that particular program, they were going to come out with like a PCA certificate. Um, and it was just something about that that just did not set well with me. I thought two years is a long time to come out with a PCA certificate. And so when I started doing some research and I found out that most people do the PCA class in 40 hours, I thought I can't participate in something that I feel is not quite right. Um, and I realized the program was set up for different reasons because they did have the students going into different um, classes, like more math classes, more English classes. So I can appreciate it now, but my initial thought was, this is not right. But in, 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 you know, it was a legit accredited program. So I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, not um, supporting that program because I do 100%. But it was just something that gave me this nudge to say, hey, listen, you can you can do this. You you don't necessarily have to be in this 
realm all the time. So branch out. So I initially started teaching the personal care aid class. I started offering that class for two weeks. And then um, I took on a position as a director of nursing. And I remember going in the room on the first day that I was um, being interviewed, you know, they were giving me the tour and I saw this what I thought was a nurse, <laughs> give mm -hmm. insulin in the upper part of the arm, which is the muscular part. And I thought, hmm, now I'm not sure I want to take on this position um, if a nurse doesn't know where to give insulin. And so I immediately said to the administrator that was uh, interviewing me, I said, so listen, I have a problem and I'm known to speak up. Anyone that knows me knows that. It's one thing about me for sure. I said, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why that nurse gave insulin in that muscular area. I said, that just doesn't make sense. She goes, well, we don't have a nurse in here. You will be the nurse. I said, then who do you have given medication? And that's when I found out about medication aids because I had never heard of a registered medication aid in my entire life. Um, and so I started to really dig more. I did not take that particular position because I was thinking if I'm going to be the only nurse and there are people in here that don't know how to properly give medication, that's my license. So I took another DON position and they also had medication aids, but by then I had done some research and I decided to make a difference and to make sure that people were properly trained. I thought I need to offer this class as well. And so that's how I got into offering registered medication aid. And so then inevitably I had to add the CNA to the course um, lineup. Um, and I'm really glad. So we started that journey in 2010 um, okay. and now we are still going. So um, we have been very blessed and fortunate to still be up and running since 2010. So, yeah. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm not sure tonight, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure why my comments are not coming through. And um, it's telling me that I am on a public platform, but it's showing me something different. So I do apologize, but I want to say welcome to, um, thank you for joining us to Marie. She's faithful to us and Carlethea and Nicole Bell. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Julia Royston. Thank you so much. That's royalty in the house right there. Uh, thank you for joining us on today. Um, and all those who have joined us, I saw some other names pop up a little earlier. So I do apologize um, for whatever is happening. But anyway, we're so glad we are with Miss Gigi Hopkins. Do, let me see if I can um, move this banner I have and see if your name pops up so everyone will know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want, there you are, yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I like to keep my little. I like my little banner. I have every now and then. I loved that. I loved it. <laughs> but um, so we're just talking about um, Miss Gigi in her healthcare field. Um, I'm moving into a zone of health and wellness and healthcare, and um, I'm not moving just in you know, us taking care of our bodies, but also in the field of healthcare, because I am in the field of healthcare. And we have a lot of people who, um, you know, have a desire to be in the field of healthcare. And it's good to let them know that there's more than one thing that they can do, because a lot of people only see it as being a nurse, you know, only see it as being an LPN or RN. And there are so many different avenues, but sometimes it is good, as you said, to start from you know where you can start and then work your way up so that you can have a feel of everything. Now I'll tell you, I've never been a CNA, but I don't count myself as above a CNA's job. Mm -hmm. So um, you know when I work with CNAs, most of the CNAs I work with will tell you that I will get in and get in, get down, get dirty, go right with them and do what I have to do to make sure right. that our participants and our patients are, um, you know, well taken care of. Because that's the way I was just brought up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and in nursing, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. But when you see a need, as as you said, we are servants. And so as a real servant, there's no way you could really walk by certain things and not say, hey, let exactly. me help you. Exactly. 
if you're doing that, you might want to reconsider your feelings, right? <laughs> I say it all the time. And, you know, it's so funny because um, I personally feel the face of nursing has changed drastically. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I've been in uh, in nursing over 35 years because I think I'm actually going into my 36th year now. And it is amazing the changes. I mean, we know that changes are going to come, but just that core stuff, um, some of it has mm-hmm. changed. Um, you know, I remember a day that every title that I mentioned to you that I had, I earned it. It wasn't because I came out with that certificate that said, hey, I'm this. Right. You, you know, you really had to earn your own. You had to you had to prove yourself, you know, and I just and, and sometimes I think that gets thrown away now because of the need, because we're in such a shortage. But um, I think a lot of people come to this as a second career um, because they think there's that security with it. Um, and I I'm like you. You can't walk past something and see it and not do it. I don't care if it's the nurse and assistant's job or whose job it is. If a resident or a client or patient needs to be clean, you don't, you know, you know, I've had, I've heard horror stories from some of my former students. Well, you know, the nurse walked all the way down the hall, around the corner and up the, up the breezeway to tell me somebody needed to (laughs) be changed. And I'm like, all of that time she spent walking, she could have just changed the the patient. Um, So for me, I always try to teach our students never lose sight of the purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to serve. And I use the word serve a lot in the school. Um, You know, some people get skittish about using anything that kind of resembles as if we're trying to preach to them, but I'm going to always use the word servant because that is, that is who we are. That is what we're doing. We're serving. And I tell them, it doesn't matter to me whether you like the person you're working with. The be all end all goal is to serve that patient with everything that's in you. And, um, you should leave away feeling rewarded. And if you don't, then we need to revisit why you don't. Um, because this is not for the faint at heart. That is for sure. <laughs> you have to want to do this job. You have to love it in all honesty. It's not just a, I just really want to be a nurse. You have to really want, um, have it in your heart to do it and to serve. And it's just no other way, honestly. Right. Yes. And so let's talk about um, some of the things that have um, come up for you. So you moved from that uh, position of teaching and then you opened your own location. So tell us about that. Yeah. So we first started, um, and you know, I always tell people, um, every facet of my life starts with humble beginnings, which I'm glad even the way, you know, as a child, I grew up in not the fanciest of situations. Um, I lived out in the country area and most of my childhood, I lived in homes with no running water and no bathroom. And not every day I went to school that I have on clean clothes. Um, And so for me, everything I do is that type of humble beginnings. And To me, you appreciate it more. And so when I started the business, I was thinking, wow, I can't even believe that girl that came from that is actually doing this. Um, Mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it was just a pure blessing. Um, I started off the humble beginnings that I started off with in the training center. I started off in an office park. We had like four rooms (laughs) that we were renting. Um, And after... I think I was there for two or three, three years. I was there for three years and, you know, the owner did not want to do any upkeep and I don't hide my faith from anyone. I believe that God has things for all of us and I believe that he has it in in abundance. And so when I started to have to give students a disinfectant wipe, toilet tissue and paper towel to go to the bathroom, that's when I said, oh no this has got to change. God, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I know you called me to do this. So now I am counting on you to get me out of this. And when I got out of it, I said, and 
I was taught by a great man of God how to have faith. Um, and I will always, always, always be indebted to Bishop Melvin Williams for his teaching on giving and being a servant. Um, those are the two things that I've always carried through this journey. And I said, I have faith enough to believe that if I ask God for something, he's going to do it. So I said, I want a few things when I move from here. I want a big enough space so the students can move around. I want a big enough space that we have our own bathroom. <laughs> you know, coming up with no bathroom in the house most of the time when I was growing up, you learn how to cherish a bathroom, right? Nice. So I'm like, I want my own bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, and we've been tucked away here on Marshall Street. No one really knows I'm back here. So I'm believing for you to, I want to be like Walgreens. I want to occupy a corner. I want to have a big red sign on the building. And today, and I'm going into my fifth year in the Laburnum Square Shopping Center, where we are across the street from Walgreens <laughs> and we have a big red sign on the building. And so I just like to say to anyone that's listening, if you see it, you believe it can happen, go for it um, and work your faith. Faith is just like anything else. In order for it to be healthy, just like our bodies, we need to exercise it. And so I just, I took that leap. And like I said, I've had the best mentor on faith, giving and serving. And so it just, it worked for us. And so we've been at Laburnum Square where we are now and Praise God. We have 1,600 square feet, not four different awesome. rooms. And we have right. a huge bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, for some people, that's nothing. But coming from where I came from, that is that is a plus. So, um, you know, I wanted a space where I could have what I needed to have in the school. So we have a skills lab where we have four mannequins in hospital beds. Um, and we have a fifth room that we ask, also have as a skills lab. We have medication carts. We have um, all of the equipment that the students would use in the in a nursing home or in a, an assisted living facility. And I am so thankful to God that we were able to have those things. Um, in the very beginning, when my humble beginnings was a store mannequin. <laughs> I had two wow. store mannequins in my very first place, but you couldn't tell the students nothing. You know, they right. they right. washed right. those mannequins right. like they were washing a real person. And so I take, I love the journey that God has had me on. Um, I take nothing for it. Even the childhood that I just spoke of, um, it was done with a purpose and on purpose. And I'm living in that purpose now um, because sometimes my story gets to help my students. You know, sometimes people walk in and they think, oh, she has a school, she has this and she has that. But then when I'm very transparent and I share some very personal and dark childhood things with them because I get students from all walks of life. And sometimes I get students that don't feel loved, don't know what love is and never think that they can even get to a PCA class, let alone going to the CNA level and the medication aid level. I have students that I have watched come to all of our classes and now they're in RN school. So that to me is the purpose. <laughs> that is why I was taken through the journey that I was taken through because I know what it is to start from the bottom and um, and work your way to the middle because I'm not yet at the top. <laughs> It's okay. It's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, let's play this little video that you sent us with your um with your building. Oh, okay. you got it right. Um, yay. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and hit play. Education aid. It is a little less two weeks. Our personal care aid students are equipped with the skills and knowledge to work in both assistant living facilities and one-on-one -on -one in a client's home. We offer our online courses for both CNA and medication aid. Our CNA students are sought out by some of the top-ranked nursing agencies, skilled facilities, and hospitals across Virginia. Our medication aid students are employed by some of the top-ranked retirement communities in the state of Virginia. So what are you waiting for? Join us today. That's Dominion Health Education Center, located 4746 Finley Street in the Laburnum Square Shopping Center. Call us today at area code 804-340-6163. Oh, 
Okay, so there you have it. And guess what? If you forget, if you forget the name of the street it's on, just think of me. <laughs> it's on Finley Street. Finley. <laughs> it's on the A. With an a. <laughs> it's, yeah, but hey, you can't, you can't put it in. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> forget if you think of me. I saw that on Gwen Finley's show. She was on Finley Street. Finley right. Street. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, well, that's awesome. And we have some other pictures, but I, I don't have the. Well, I do have them pulled up here. Let's see. Let's see. We just don't know what's going to happen today. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going to try it. We're going to try it. We're going to try to share the screen again. We're going to try to share the different screen. Um, but anyway, so with um, with what you're doing now. How has it been throughout the pandemic? Yeah. So once again, blessed and just feel privileged to be able to still be up and running. Um, we didn't have to shut down. Um, we um, were one of two schools in the state of Virginia to have the online nurse aid class. The only other school in the state of Virginia was J. Sergeant Reynolds. Um, and so we just transitioned all of our students to online. And then all of our other classes, we are the only school to have the medication aid class online at the time. And so we really didn't have to shut down. We just pushed all of our students into the online course. And um, we have, it's amazing in the pandemic, but it's not amazing because it's just simply God. Um, we have triple our enrollment during the pandemic. So it has been absolutely phenomenal for us. The picture that you're showing now is a picture of our medication aid students um, at the medication cart counting narcotics. <laughs> wow. Wow. And that is the picture of our skills lab. Um, so we have students practicing. Those are nurse aid students getting ready to go to clinicals um, where they go to the nursing home and serve the residents um, for 40 hours. They have to do it for 40 hours. Wow. Okay. And that's another picture of our nurse aid students um, in the skills lab. And they're also professionally dressed and just yes. awesome. <laughs> and that's a nice and that is. Owner. <laughs> That's our school. So we are in the, uh, most people know the Kroger Shopping Center right at the corner of Williamsburg Road and Laburnum Avenue. That's where we're located. Um, we're, I always say we're in the Kroger Shopping Center. But yes, and you mentioned that they are professionally, <laughs> say again? In the script deck. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're in that same, you know, Shrimp Shack came later or, you know, I can't bring myself to say script. I just can't. So the shack, the shack came later. Um, but yeah, so we're in that same, we're in that same area. But um, yeah, so our students are uniformed. Um, I'm an old school nurse. And, you know, sometimes when we lose students because they can't have long fingernails, they're like, how long should they be? And I do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um they can't like if any of my students saw me now because they've never seen me with earrings this big on ever <laughs> um you know i'm always wearing stud earrings and um so they can't have um extended lashes the tattoos have to be covered nails have to be short they always wear a white scrub top and we do provide that for them um our nurse aid students wear navy blue scrub pants our medication aid students wear burgundy and our PCA students were black. Um, and, you know, it's amazing because some of them fight us on the nails and fight us on the, the white scrub top, but when they put it on and they get, you know, we have a, a badge maker. So they actually have like hospital badge um, IDs. And so when they put that on, it just, you see a whole different person, you know, right. they, they right. smile different, they walk different, they talk different. And, um, and that's what it's about for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you know, it's it's all preparation for the real world because exactly. there are some places that'll let you do what you want to do, but the majority of places still have certain standards that you mm -hmm. have to abide by. So if you're gonna learn, you need to learn the whole process. Exactly. Um, you know, and and you know, as one who just came off of uh supervision, you know, with um, nursing assistants and PCAs, you know, and I would, I would tell some of the ladies, you know, what you do uh, on the weekend, you know, is 
your business if it's not your right. week of work. <laughs> but when you're working, you know, you have to follow the rules. It's just mm-hmm. what it is. Everybody has to follow the standards and the rules. And then not only that, we had um, patients who, when they would go to their homes, like if they had a certain amount of things going on in the, you know, the nose rings and all of that, mm-hmm. we had people who was actually afraid of them coming in their home. Um, mm-hmm. Because it sends a different message now, right. and it's not to, not to down anybody what they do on their personal time. But when you're going into someone else's home, they have you know what they're looking for you to actually Absolutely. bring into their home. Absolutely, and so that professionalism is necessary. It you may never agree with it, but it's necessary, and yeah. so you just and- follow the standards. You have to follow the standards. And and so, you know, I'd rather have a student walking out, a potential student walking out and saying, I don't want to come here. Um, I'd rather take that chance because for me, if we start compromising our core values or changing things for a dollar, then that compromises the operation of the business. And that actually compromises my faith. And I'm not going to do that because if I stick to my core values, because I tell the students all the time, if I bend my rules, they're no longer rules. Right. Absolutely. And what they don't realize on the first day, but they'll soon realize it, I'm setting you up to be able to work anywhere you want to work. Anywhere. Now, if you keep up the way you want to do things, you'll only work where you can work. It is a That's difference true. being wanted by everybody and being chosen by a few somebodies. And so oh. that is, you know, that is my goal for them. We partner with a lot of people and we're very fortunate to partner with some very reputable companies. And I want you to be able to work for any of them. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and I tell them about the nails. The majority of the people we will serve in the nursing home are dementia patients. When you have Mm -hmm. long fingernails, and especially these 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 new nails with those pointed edges, they look like (laughs) claws. And so a dementia patient won't know that they're fingernails. They will think that they're claws. And so when you're going to just simply say hello and they're being defensive and pushing you away. If you don't understand dementia, you'll say, oh, this lady is so mean and hateful. Every time I go hug her, she pushes me away when it's that she's afraid of your nails. And so when I explain it that way, they understand it. So, you know, I tell them I don't have anything against nails. I don't have anything against tattoos or piercings. There's a time and a place. And one of um, one of our partnering facilities, the representative said, I don't want to see your Friday night on Monday morning. <laughs> and I said, that sums it up for me right there. Right. So I do okay. believe that it is important as educators in the healthcare field that we teach on professionalism um, and we don't waver on that. Um, I think it's part of our curriculum. Uh, we do a teaching on working as a professional and I think it's super important to do that. So again, that they can go and work anywhere that they choose to work. It's almost like when I started off when in my humble beginnings, when I would go to buy a car, they would have to tell me the car I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. I it's a big you. difference in someone yeah. saying, this is the car you, you're you going to get. But to go to Rick Hendrick Chevrolet and say, I want that white Chevy Tahoe and I'm leaving with it, it's a big difference. You know what I mean? And so that's what I tell them. Right. And I tell them, you want people to choose you. Mm-hmm. and say, I want you working for me because of your professionalism, because of the way you carry yourself, because of the way, you know, you seem to love the patient. So they get it in the end, you know, and it's funny that you're Miss G because that's what they call me. And I right. said, wow, this is interesting. Another Miss G. <laughs> um, and they're like, Miss G, I know I get it. I understand it. Well, listen, mm-hmm. I come from a tough place, but it's a place of love. And and I will never waver in that. And so I believe because I don't um, and because I have followed the blueprint that God has set out for me, I believe that the school has stayed afloat because of that. Um, so I won't waver in that. And I'm old school, so I definitely won't. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, you hear it. If you're looking for a place where 
you or if you know someone who really needs um, a great place to learn, not just some skills, but to learn the whole um, the whole professionalism and all of the standards of care. That's really the important part because yeah, you can absolutely. learn skills anywhere, but where are you going to learn? And like you said, having options, not mm-hmm. just being limited to this because, right. and that word options has been floating around all, all week for me. And mm-hmm. so I'm loving that word options, but God, um, you know, he has really blessed you with a heart for these um, people, not all young people, but it's just people who need right. um, need guidance and need instruction. And so it's wonderful to have this conversation with you. What are your future plans? Do you have any more plans that you want to share with us? <laughs> and we haven't um, talked about that <laughs> So, um, you know, every like at least once a week, a student or someone is saying to me that, you know, you really should teach LPN school and they just don't know the headache that comes with that. So I won't rule it out. So if any of my students are looking, I won't rule it out. Um, but I won't say just yet. Um, I also, I don't do anything fully with it now, but I'm really close to finishing up my real estate school. Um, My son, um, I'm very, um, I have two boys. One actually works at the school as an enrollment advisor, but the other one, um, he works, um, he actually works at Capital One, but I'm so proud of him. He has, um, he's purchased his fifth home. You know, he, he does flips. And so I kind of want to have a venture with him. And um, I took the real estate course years ago, but I did nothing with it. Um, But I kind of want to do this venture with my son um, and pull my other son in on it as well. And so I'm finishing up that course um, <laughs> so that I can branch into the real estate just a little bit with my sons. I They're my life. They're my absolutes. Yeah. And then my two grandkids are my absolute absolutes. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to, um, both of my sons play a role in the business. Um, like I said, my youngest son is the enrollment advisor. Um, and my I always say my oldest son is the silent advisor because <laughs> he oh. always, you know, he'll like, well, you have you thought about, have you thought about? So um, I am so fortunate and so blessed um, to have them by my side. And um, so, yeah, so that's the next thing, but um, nothing real major. Um, I love teaching this part of nursing because it's the foundation um, and I love to give back. And um, so the one thing that God has just allowed me to be able to do every time we have a session, we do have a student on a scholarship. Um, And I'm never closed off to someone sending me something saying, hey, listen, I have this young lady who really just needs a chance. Um, That has happened to us so many times. Um, And I give them a chance because honestly, Gwen, that's what happened with me. Um, My nurse aid instructor saw something in me that people very close to me either refused to see or just didn't see. Um, And she used one word, potential. Um, And I said to her, I said, well, in my home, college is not talked about for me. There's no money for me to go to college. And she said, oh, but you're going. And, you know, um, in this hour, it's really hard for me because considering all things with today, it was someone who I was told don't trust. You know, Mm. sometimes you're told not to trust certain people because they don't look like you. But, you know, she was in five, probably five foot four, blue eyed, blonde hair nurse Mm. who saw something. And she and her husband and I'm forever indebted to them. um, She and her husband paid for my first half of my LPN school. Um, And when I offered to pay her back and and she helped me with Pell Grants because I didn't know anything about it. Mm. and she and her husband paid that and she got me straight with the Pell Grant for the other half. And I said, how can I repay you? She said, you have, you're an LPN. Now pay it forward. So each session, I make sure that I pay it forward because I never forget the feeling of someone seeing something in me, someone believing in me. And so I will always 
make sure that we have someone on a scholarship at our school. Um, that is my way to pay homage to Catherine Smigelski because I am forever indebted to her. She has definitely been the mentor for me in healthcare. Um, and so, I think I know, I think I know her. I think we work I together. I love her. She's a nurse practitioner. I yes. absolutely love her. She is such a giver. Let me tell you. She. This is funny. <laughs> funny. She is such a giver, and it's weird. It's this is a weird thing, but we worked together recently, um, maybe last two years, and she had <laughs> she had these pillows in her car. I don't know why. We ended up. <laughs> trying to find a pillow for a patient mm -hmm. and she, uh, something happened. And I said something about that. I said, that's a nice pillow. And she said, Oh, you like it? You can have it. <laughs> and she had two, yeah. I mean, yeah. the nice pillows, not those little cheap yeah. flat oh, pillows. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they are on my bed right now from mm -hmm. Kathy. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's yeah. a small world. She I is a gift. I promise you, because of my upbringing, I didn't have, and, and I'm not ashamed of my testimony, I didn't have the best mouth in the world. I just didn't. Um, I grew up where cursing was like everything. I mean, and it just like everyday language. And so she used to always pull me aside. She goes, you know, you're so smart. You're so intelligent. Of your mouth. And I'm like, what's wrong with my mouth? I probably cursed when I said that. And she goes, it's not ladylike. And, and, and I didn't, I really didn't give thought to it because it's what I've always heard. Right. And so she groomed me and she really took the time. And, you know, it's funny because again, another one of my testimonies that I didn't know would come out today, but I actually had my oldest son when I was 18. Um, so I was finishing up high school and I mm -hmm. promise you, the look on her face, I thought, oh, I'm breaking her heart. But she hung in there with me. Mm -hmm. um, she's the one person that never doubted me, never counted me out. And I think for her, it was like, oh, no, you know, I had yeah. big plans for you. And um, right. but she right. never, ever made me feel like. I was a disappointment. Instead, she just picked me up and said, listen, here's what we're going to do now. You now need to go to LPN because you need something quick. You know, and she did not bite her tongue about her feelings for my baby daddy. Um, she she doesn't bite her tongue to be somebody so small. Um, and so she hung in there with me and she pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. So she is why I do what I do and why I give the way that I give because if she hadn't done that for me, I would not be able to do it for someone else. So I am just forever grateful to her and George because she's why I became an LPN. Um, you know, you don't get somebody who you're told never to trust to come out of their pocket and pay for your first half of an education. Yeah. That doesn't she's happen. A, she's a sweetheart. She came out of retirement and was working with us. And uh -huh. she, the people would wait until the day that she was coming in mm -hmm. to be seen by her, see her because yeah. she's just that type of person. So that is such an awesome testimony. And uh, I'm so happy for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do, because I know that there's so much greater coming. God, you know, Thank his you. hand is That's definitely true. on your life. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I was talking with um, someone about you. I'll tell you who later. And so people <laughs> just love you. People just love you. But one Hello. of the things, one of the things <laughs> that I also remember about you is that because we've been talking about work, 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 and school, school, mm -hmm. school. But <laughs> hey, Miss Gigi, you don't mind having a little fun, and um, <laughs> you don't mind getting on the two wheeler and having some fun. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> I love, love, love motorcycles. Um, now, I want to be very clear. I do not like being a passenger on a motorcycle, ever. <laughs> it's not a good feeling. I don't like being on the back of one. Um, I like the throttle power, so I like to be near the throttle. So, yes, I love motorcycles. I love riding. Um, I prefer sports bikes, but I ended up 
as I get older, I realize a cruiser is what <laughs> in your fifties. It, it's just something about doing the sports bike. It just, it doesn't work sometimes. Once you've labored so much in nursing, you, you got back issues and all other kinds of things. So uh, yes, I absolutely love motorcycles. Um, it is the exhilaration. Um, you can, there's no other feeling like it to me, you know, I um, am a tomboy at heart, and I always tell my girlfriends, I was like, y'all like heels and I like thrills, so we, we're we fine. <laughs> right, <laughs> They're right. like, you never wear jewelry, you never do this. I'm like, no, but you give me a motorcycle and I will definitely ride it. <laughs> now, you used to have, I want to say it was orange. <laughs> was it an orange one you used to have? I did, with bubbles all over it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I had an orange that. one with bubbles all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good yes, to know yes. that you know how to let your hair down, so to speak, for, you know, and, and get your relaxation on and, you oh, know, absolutely. have some joyous moments um, because you deserve every last one of them. Thank you. I want to thank, thank you. you so much for joining us today. And um, I do apologize. I did not put up the address, but you can give the address, even though we talked about it being on Finlay Street. Um <laughs> You can put up, you can tell us the address. Maybe I can just type it in real quick. Uh, what is it? Okay. So it's 4746 Finlay Street. And it's in Henrico. All right. I can and I always like to say we're in the Kroger Shopping Center, right at the corner of Williamsburg Road and Laburnum Avenue. Um, you will find us in that strip mall um, with the big red letters that says PCA, MedTech, and CNA on the top. <laughs> okay, so go get your learning on. Go get your learning on. Sponsor someone. Um, you know, or, or let someone know if they're looking for, you see young ladies out in the street or young men. We need a lot of men. In, and we in get a men. lot. Mm-hmm. That's we good train to a know. lot of males as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a very diverse culture. We pride ourselves on being a diverse culture. Mm-hmm. So we get a lot of students, a lot of races, a lot of ethnic backgrounds. Um, and, and we pride ourselves on that. Um, and one of the things that I have always wanted to make sure is that I was on the bus line. Um, because mm-hmm. I want not only to be on the bus line, but I want to be close to low income housing. Um, and so we are right in the center and we are definitely close to the main three that's in the city of Richmond. And so I just want to say to anyone that's listening, if you do know of a young girl, because one of my passions is mentoring young women um, as a life coach, I do that daily <laughs> just about because again, we get students from all walks of life, but um, I certainly would love to have any, any young girl mm-hmm. that maybe just unsure, kind of want to do this nursing thing, we would definitely offer them the PCA class. And even if someone knows someone who can't afford it, just let me know. Um, It doesn't come without some caveats. I would definitely want them to at least write me an essay as to why they want to get into nursing. Because the one thing I won't do is offer a class just to be offering it. You have to want to do this. And and it has to be believable. Because I, Mm -hmm. the way I see it, Gwen, whoever I send out, their blood <laughs> is on me if something doesn't go right. right. So I never right. want to send people out that really don't want to do this. But if you know of a young lady or a young man that's looking for a change, that want to get in nursing but can't afford to, please let me know. And I would certainly offer them a scholarship um, just because that's just who I am and that's what we're about. And I believe that if more people had opportunities and they took advantage of them, then we would be better off in this world. So I need to do my part and to give back. And so that's just my way of doing it. Awesome. So we did not get to even talk about the life coaching in that sense, although pretty much everything you're doing is really life coaching. Um, So tell me really quickly how people can actually just get in touch with you if they're looking for a life coach and they like Mm -hmm. to um, you know, meet up with you or uh, get some information, they find you. Yeah. So um, certainly. So actually, um, I kind of work out of the same office with the school. So the area code 804-340-6163 is how we can get 
to a starting point. Um, right now, I do all of mine virtually, of course, um, with the pandemic. Um, so we are doing more, I'm doing more virtual with my life coach. But again, I feel like every day with my students is me life coaching. You know, a lot of people think of counselor when they think life coach, but that's not necessarily my my job. My job is to coach you through whatever, um, but not diagnosing you. My 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 title is registered nurse um, in nursing education. So um, counselor is not, but coaching definitely. Um, and sometimes that's all people need is just a little coaching to get through. So, um, you know, I do uh, a segment called Breaking Unhealthy Soul Ties. Um, that is a very popular segment with us, with our um, clients. Um, it's just girls getting together. Um, and just, you know, talking about things and just forming a bond because I think a lot of things are from us having unhealthy soul ties, but not having it defined as such. Um, because unhealthy soul ties can be a number of things from a job to a person to just thoughts. Um, and so that's what my coaching is about, just coaching them through those unhealthy soul ties. Um, Gwen, I thank you so much for this platform that you created. The Ladies' Lounge is a wonderful platform. So thank you for allowing me to come into the lounge and to share a bit about the school and um, my life coach and um, just me. So thank you so much. I'm forever grateful for that. Thank you. Just quote that one more time for me, please. Yes. Um, 804-340-6163. Okay. I almost had it right. I said, let me not pop it up there until I get it right. <laughs> so, just in case anybody, you know, they go back, they can list, look at the uh, replay Absolutely. and they can get the number as well. So listen, you guys, this has been a wonderful, I know she's such a busy lady and I've already taken up much more of her time than I needed to, but I am so excited um, that you have joined us and you have accepted our invitation. And we look forward to seeing you again throughout this year. Thank you. You've always been a great support to me. And um, I was thinking about, uh, I think you came to my very first retreat that I had I did. and uh, we talked about doing some other things. So I think this year we might need to get together. We should just something. get together and do it. <laughs> so uh, again, have a wonderful evening and thank you, you and too. much best wishes to everything that you put your mind to, that God will bless it and that he will uh, bring it all into fruition. Thank you. And I wish the same for you. Thank you so much, Gwen. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed our show on tonight. Miss Gigi is such a wonderful lady and we had a grand time speaking with her, just inspired, just listening um, to the things that she's saying. So I just wanted to um, say thank you once again to each and every one of you that joined us, whether it's your first time or you are following us. Um, uh, you know, this is your the, your follow-up visits. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Share this stream because there's someone out there that may need this information and just may need this. Um, so share this stream that we have on tonight. It will be up and available for you. As you can follow on any of our shows that you may have missed in the past, you can always go to Miss G's Ladies Lounge and check out our videos. They're all there for you. They are on YouTube at Miss G's Ladies Lounge. And we are also on Twitter at Miss G's Ladies Lounge. So just follow us and just, you know, check us out. Listen, we'll see you back on next week. I have a beautiful young lady coming. And she's going to be talking about health and wellness and nutrition, um, I believe, is one of her uh, main things that she speaks about. So be sure to join us on next Monday. Until then, you have a wonderful day. Remember, God loves you. And so do I.